Hello. I'm here with Michael Locke, and Todd Kelly has joined us uh, from the Harwich Conservation Trust. And uh, Todd, I think, is here to talk about some night walks. Is that right? Yes, I believe so. We have our, our native nightlife uh, walks under the full moon, although we don't really get to see the full moon, but it's a wa uh, walk series throughout uh, May through uh, uh, September. Yeah, it's, um, it's really a fun partnership yeah. with mm -hmm. uh, Todd uh, and uh, his co-leader, Marcus Hendricks. Yes, uh, okay. Is leading this Native Nightlife Walk adventure. Mm -hmm. I love the title, yeah. Native Nightlife Walk. There's a picture of uh, Todd and Marcus on yes. your screen. Um, uh, Marcus uh, is of uh, Wampanoag and Nipmuc Native American heritage. Uh, there's um, history about Native American culture as well as early colonial um, uh, stories shared by Todd and Marcus on these walks. And you, Todd, you mentioned the full moon. Yeah, the, um, the moon signifies uh, changes in the season and it doesn't abide in the same, on the same day at the same time annually. And that's the way Native peoples would have lived is uh, their spring was really the beginning of their year and it was by, by the, the full moon cycles. And that's what we talk about is that how things like uh, the strawberry moon, which we've already done, is the early part of June. And sometimes that, always, that doesn't always uh, fall in the same year. In fact, this year was a little later mm -hmm. than normally. And, is uh, that picture of the strawberry moon that we're looking at right now? Um, well, I'm not sure which moon that would be. Okay. Um, Close to full, though. That, that was taken by one of our volunteer photographers, Gus Romano. And mm -hmm. Amazing. I, That's a beautiful Isn't that a beautiful picture. photo? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but like you, you were okay. saying, Todd, so the, the walkers... Uh, don't you don't necessarily see the full moon rising, but it's mm -hmm. it's if influence is what you discuss. Absolutely, and there is one time usually we get to, and it was um, this last one. It was the um, it's the starry moon. We were actually on the day of the full moon, however we mm. didn't see it because it mm. was wasn't up yet. But yeah, the, you feel the influences. That's what it's about. Is mm -hmm. you feel the changes in the season. You know, we were all gung ho for summer. And it actually wasn't quite summer officially in our calendar. And, mm -hmm. and as we progress through the season, we'll be mid, you know, the buck moon in July and then yeah. the sturgeon moon in August. And it's a real sense of, oh, I get the change. I get the yeah. progressive change that seasons change and our behaviors change because of what we're doing. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, and you can note different things on your walks as a result of the moon. Yeah, sure, yes. absolutely. Right. Things have uh, come and gone this past <laughs> walk, you know, in the bird world. Um, uh, there's uh, a lot going on. The birds have, many birds have fledged from their nests. You know, by July, shorebirds will have been moved on their way. Uh, out in the woods right now, uh, the birds have fledged or parents have even left. Mm -hmm. uh, or still, I saw one was feeding the young right uh, yesterday. But um, soon they will go off like on a food forage through um, the rest of Mass, Western Mass, even up into New England, into uh, New Hampshire and Maine. As, as the summer's still here, and they're going on a feeding forage mm -hmm. before they leave. So mm -hmm. a lot changes in the natural world that we don't really pay, we don't notice so much. Well, it's wonderful that you're there to point it out. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, you know. I think the, na the naming of the moons is interesting, it right? Is, as, it is. As is there a moon for every... Yeah, yeah. Every, are, every phase of the moon has we, a different name. Yes, every every full moon, and mm -hmm. and it varies from uh, region to region, and it'll have multiple moon, moon names, mm -hmm. uh, like the sturgeon moon, and, and um, it's really the green corn dance, the the corn moon. That's mm -hmm. August, be, right? Yeah, is that August. August. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So what that right. is is for like in the Seminole down in Florida, they have their annual green corn dance at Chukaluski, and mm -hmm. it's about the harvesting of the corn and. The, and the, so with the sturgeon, it's about the arrival of the sturgeon, which we would have had a lot of, and there's, there's, are coming back, most mm -hmm. more so in the West and in, in Oregon mm -hmm. and, and. So it's uh, really Washington. sort of explanatory too, yeah. about what's yeah. going on at that time. Yeah. And and That's the cool. and the walk taking place uh, Monday, July fifteenth, the Native Nightlife Walk, right, mm -hmm. is called the is around the Buck Moon. The Buck Moon, and, and right. okay. tell us a little bit more about so that. So the the Buck Moon is. Um, where you know deer, uh, male deer bucks, they drop their, they shed their antlers every year around February. They drop them. They just drop off, and now they've grown back. And right now they'll be in what's called velvet. So mm. it'll be fuzzy. Mm. And if you could, if the deer let you and you went up, you could squish it, and it'd be Anyways. moist and squishy. It I wouldn't see. be solid bone inside. Mm. So the buck moon is when they've grown their antlers back as 
large as they're going to be for the season, but they still haven't calcified into bone yet. And so they keep the velvet. So they'd still be, even though they'd be large and so, fuzzy, wow. they'd, they'd be squishy, sort of squishy, because the bone... Feel velvety. Yeah, yeah, it's covered by this velvet covered uh, coverage. And then what will happen is that come late end of August, uh, that bone will become solid, and that's when they're first of September, early September, they're rutting. They're, they're rutting the flesh off of the bone. That's a lot of growth in a short period of yeah. time, yeah. Mm -hmm. February through to July. July, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah, so um, the native night I walk in July, right, July 15th, mm -hmm. um, it takes place at, starts at 5.30, is that right? No, or is that when 6 o'clock. Six, six, pardon me, 6 right. to 8, six, so in the evening. And where does it originate? Uh, actually in the National Seashore, and mm -hmm. so when folks register at our website, harwichconservationtrust.org, it's $20 per person when they register online or pay online, um, then they'll receive a confirmation email with driving directions to the location in East Ham. To the meeting place. To the meeting yeah. place, yeah. Oh, and okay. that's another neat aspect is yeah. to explore the National Seashore. Mm -hmm. And this, this walk is not only in partnership with uh, Todd and Marcus, but also with our sister land trust in East Ham, the East Ham Conservation oh, Foundation. Great. Yeah. Um, so a lot of partnerships uh, mm -hmm. involved uh, mm -hmm. with these uh, walks. And another neat aspect is, is that time of day. Yeah. Right, that that sort of transition time between daytime, let's say wildlife activity, and then the nocturnal or nighttime activity. Right. That mm. so it's an interesting name for that time of day, cr crepuscular activity. Crepuscular. By yes. can you the, tell the what? dawn and dusk? So mm. I like to call them. They're the swing shifts. So the day shifts are diurnal. So mm. let's say squirrels um, and chipmunks, and uh, the crepuscular are dawn and dusk. Well, that's fox, coyote, um, mm. and uh, deer. Rabbit, you could say, is, is a crepuscular. They're, they're at that first thing in the morning to get the dew off the grasses. Um, and then there, so, so they're the swing shift. And then there's the night shift, like the great horned owl and the raccoons and skunks and other animals like otter, which really is nocturnal because of us. It's just, uh, it can be, it doesn't mean that you can't see any of these animals during the day. And if you do, it doesn't mean they're sick. It just, especially in the wintertime, they would come out because it's easier. That's energy conservation. But there's, so like a, if I'm a red-tailed hawk and my main uh, diet are, are rodents and say rabbits, uh, and I'm competing with a great horned owl who actually takes birds as well, but on different shifts we're not competing. So that's kind of nature's strategies where, <laughs> mm. where birds and animals right. can, can coexist, right. and even if they have similar diets, they're not necessarily competing with each other. Mm. Sort of a natural rhythm. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then the nocturnal ones come on, and that's also with us. You know, when you get to the end of a day, a work day, or here in the summer, think about it. We've been at the beach all day, and now you're ready for to sit back and maybe have a clam bake, or, mm -hmm. you know, in the evening mm -hmm. when it's cooling mm -hmm. off, we've gotten refreshed, we're going to sit around and maybe tell stories. And that's mm -hmm. the way the people would have been, is they'd gather together around these moons, um, and um, some of them would be very significant, and, and there's more to it as far as, uh, like, only the clan mothers would get together uh, uh, on, the moon, on a particular moon, mm -hmm. and they would talk about things. They would mm -hmm. share tradition and, and understanding mm -hmm. and wisdom, and this was a time for the younger kids to learn that as well. Uh -huh. That's uh -huh. what that's about. Right, I see. So, yeah, so mm -hmm. I'm thinking people are having their clam bakes in the evening, whereas during the day we've seen the seagulls having their clam bakes. Right. <laughs> right. Clam yes. feasts, Feast, yeah. not bakes necessarily, right. but yeah. And yeah, so, that's so, great. And so we have another uh, walk later in July okay. uh, that uh, we're partnering with Todd and Marcus on, and in, this time also uh, instead partnering with the Truro Conservation Trust. Mm, Since this one will take wonderful. place yeah. in the National Seashore. It'll be July 27th, which is okay. a... Saturday. This one will be in the morning, nine to eleven. Mm -hmm. um, that one's called High Head in the Highlands, uh, oh, and um, Todd can share more about that yeah. walk coming up. Yeah, yeah thank you. It's um, it's favorite place. It's a sense of real pride in Down Cape, the Lower Cape. Outer Cape is good. That's a good. It's a valid term. And my day was just Lower Cape, but you're still going down the Cape, mm -hmm. down and out. Mm -hmm. And Turo, wealthy <laughs> Turo, and the Province Lands are worlds really unto themselves. Mm -hmm. And High Head is the end of Glacial Cape Cod. Province lands are all eroded out of the, uh, the shore of, of uh, uh, Truro, and even province lands are initially are North Truro, and all of Provincetown is from that erosion. So it's, a, it's got a different story to tell. 
and but the highlands of Truro is a uh, highland light was really it was a navigational landmark prior to the, the lighthouse that sailors back in the 1600s they, it was a very uh, di identifiable cliff it had a very unique feature to it and that was really the target line to for European ships to come across I think it's the 42nd parallel and that takes you right to Highland and that was a, and then you either went north or went south and uh, that's what happened to the pilgrims is yeah. Christopher Jones so it came. had real historical significance yeah. for us yeah, yeah. Mm. Fascinating. and then people lived there people the first people were there they weren't in the larger communities of Nauset uh, so they were in smaller wealthy would you put an Akinet and Pamet of the Pamet Valley always where the water is that's mm -hmm. where the people are going to mm -hmm. be we would be where the water is for the view, but for the people, it would be because of the, right. the resource, what, what it brought. And, um, so you'll so be doing a walk there? Yes. Yes, um, yeah, yep, July great. 27th, yeah. yeah. And folks, again, can register, register at harwichconservationtrust.org mm -hmm. and with their confirmation email, they'll receive driving directions. Get directions. Yes, okay. yeah. A lot of history on that walk yeah. and natural history, yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and unraveling a lot of mystery, too. I mean, it's really oh. wonderful. I think a lot of these things are very mysterious to people. Yeah. Uh, what's really going on under the surface? Under the say, surface. There's lots of things that we don't notice and see, and you'll be there to help point yeah. it out. Yeah. Sometimes we, we benefit. We, we see a deer. The last walk we did, actually a deer came right across the marsh. Um, wow. That was at the nightlife. Uh, it came across the marsh and um, nice. you know went on its way. Yeah, mm. yeah. And um, uh, sometimes, and we've seen them in uh, Truro as well. We've had up on the hills, we've had a doe and a couple of her, her yearlings pop out, and um, mm -hmm. right up on the hill, we were looking at them. And then the coyote as well, sitting up there, just kind of checking things out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's always an adventure. <laughs> well, those, yes, those are the <laughs> things that people are excited about, mm. about possibly experiencing, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's great. So, uh, Mike, do you have anything else to? update us on or are we all set for today i think we're set for today and we'll okay. we'll see you again the next round well, yeah thank you thanks so for having much. us and thank you so much todd for coming and thank yeah. you todd for coming yeah. as well this My is pleasure. great i'm sure the walks are going to be fascinating yeah, yeah you never know what you're going to see right I'm sure that's true. me included okay. well of course there's no predicting really okay great well thank you um this is diana lane for harwich channel 18 thank you so much